I'm here with Nassim Taleb. We know him as the author of The Black Swan. I like to think of you, Nassim, as a traitor turned philosopher. Thanks. This is a, uh, you know, the problem is when you want a traitor, you stay a traitor. Regardless of what always, you know. a, once a traitor, always a traitor. Always you're a, a risk traitor. management guru. You're a contrarian. You're a number of things. Contrarian, contrarian doesn't mean take the opposite position. To no, what I know. Are, yeah, all right. Mean so, independent, you mean. So let's tap into some of that right now. Okay. You, like me, and everyone here, yeah. everyone anywhere, has been watching what's going on in the White House. And some people think of it as a train wreck. When you look at what's going on in the White House, when you look at what Donald Trump is doing and what he's saying, what do you see? Well, uh, first of all, you watch too much <laughs> news because I don't see a train wreck. Um, and I don't see particularly Donald Trump as anything different from other uh, politicians except in his language, okay? Uh, and, and, or perhaps uh, in, in the way he does things in the accelerated way. Why? You got to remember that Donald Trump is a fellow who never had a supervisor in his life. No boss. No boss. So he doesn't know how to express things in a way that a supervisor, okay? Can understand so you have to translate what he says and just focus on what he does and to see the things he's trying to do what about firing the fbi director what what First about all, concerns signal, what about concerns the, the over... signal i got that maybe because i live in a different world maybe because i watch actions not commentary uh, to me the way he fired the reason he fired comey is because in, probably in the mind of trump he doesn't collude with the russians and for him, it's a diversion. That's it. It's the opposite. A, in other words, the opposite of what most people think. Many yeah, people, I won't say most, it, think many it. people think Trump, he fired Comey because Trump Comey is, wouldn't stop Trump, probing the Russia ties or allegations. Maybe, but Trump is not, you know, people think that Trump is not someone who is intelligent. Trump is not an idiot. He wouldn't be there if he didn't. He, he, there's something, there's a logic to Trump that you can only get if you forget about the news and then look at Trump as Trump. That's his behavior. He didn't do anything wrong. He may have, he may have violated a rule, but there's nothing, not the gravity that you may attribute to a, uh, someone who's trying to cover up something. He's not trying to cover up. So what happens then? This all, this is, this all works itself out? It's fine? I, I don't know, but I mean, we've had uh, many of those. We had that uh, paranoia about the Russians, but that's not what's happening now. A lot of things are happening that people aren't looking at. Such as? Okay, so you got to look at the situation pre-Trump and which way we're heading. There are a lot of things that Trump are, uh, is, you know, came to do that mm -hmm. are substantial. The first one is after 32 years, fixing the tax code. Okay, the tax code is, some, is, is exactly like something that's metastatic, all right? It starts, uh, uh, the codes bring codes, bring codes, bring codes, unless someone comes in with a Gordian knot, cuts the whole thing, and you need someone aggressive. Okay, Trump tax reform right? number one. Number two is Obamacare is a disaster. It's a centralized system for 300 million Americans we're not Canadians, all right? Canada is a small country. You cannot scale things up. You need to do it differently. So the, the point isn't whether you're depriving people you, or In not, other words, you support the effort to repeal Obamacare. To replace Obamacare with something more rational. Okay, so That's he wanted to cut point. taxes. He wanted to repeal Obamacare and replace Three. it. Third, we, the train wreck, the real train wreck is globalization. Globalization, and I, I mean, I wrote about it on the Black Swan and everybody cheered. Right, and now they're against it. Globalization leads to monoculture. I mean, unfettered globalization leads to a concentration of companies and winner take all effect. Okay, and, and I describe so he's it, the anti globalist, not anti globalist, he's fixing the system. All right, he's okay, making the system survive by fixing some of the things in the system that are not sustainable. That's the third point. Um, fourth point. Uh, well, we have a, uh, a problem with what we call the pseudo elite, right? These people, um, and, well, and you've been written swelling about many times. under many times, and the last ten years uh, been swelling. I'm not just saying Obama for, from before Obama, but of course accelerated greatly under Obama. A lot of people 
uh, the pseudo experts that in the black swan I describe as incapable of mm -hmm. finding a coconut on coconut island but somehow because they have an Ivy League degree they're given a position and these people these people you need to sort of like replace them with doers and this is we need that okay what you're saying yeah if if, if I understand it correctly is that yeah. you're supportive of the things that Trump has said he wants to do uh, of some of the things uh, okay. the fifth thing uh, the, the, I, uh, we're going to see later. And then number five, Trump came on a platform of non-interventionism. So we have five things. Now, of course, foreign policy, in terms exactly, of foreign policy. Of, of course, I am pro-environment, but I am anti-metastatic uh, bureaucracy running, stuff like that, you see. So at least we need someone to fix the system. And you believe the Trump is the guy to fix the system? Well, he's aggressive enough on this platform. Now, the problem is he may not deliver and I'm very worried that point number five, intervention is he may not deliver because that's not what I see from you know his recent actions. Yes. When you see the market sell off 400 yes. points, yes, as it did yesterday, yes, is that people coming to the same conclusion that he may not deliver? I think. Well, let me tell you one thing. First, uh, the, 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 this is a blip. Okay. Let, let's. Let, yesterday's problem, yesterday's sell off was a blip. blip. I mean, look, since Trump is uh, you know is here, we had like uh, a substantial increase in the, around plus or minus ten percent. Mm -hmm. And so we, we can't talk about a blip. The but there is a deeper problem, and let's talk about it now. The mistake and the thing I disagree with Trump is Trump came in, okay, bought the market on its highs. Unlike Obama bought a dip, as Mark Spitznagel said, Trump should dis, uh, um, associate himself from the market. What you mean by because, this is when yeah. Obama, the market hit its low in March of 2009, exactly. only a couple of months after Obama took office. Exactly. So Obama had the market okay, on a cheap, all right? So the market went up. He can claim all the credits. Now, Trump is claiming credit. On the market he's getting okay he's buying on its highs so that's not rational he should disengage himself from the market because he has inherited a very sick situation Obama left us had eight years of Novocaine okay so now we've had 2007 the crisis started 10 years ago in 10 years, okay, we are still dealing with a remedy. I mean, since what? A patient goes to the hospital and 10 years later, you're still giving him, you know, you're still giving him no, I mean, uh, pain no, see, even yes. if Even if someone were to agree with you, yeah. how does Trump disengage himself from the market? The he owns the market whether he likes it or not. Maybe, but he can explain, okay, he can explain, he could have explained, just coming in, he could explain that, listen, uh, uh, there are a lot of things that uh, uh, my predecessors have left me with that I don't agree with. And uh, if uh, the market collapses, uh, it's not bad. But claiming credit for that rise in the market makes them vulnerable to I'm, itself. I'm not, sure, I'm not you, sure the effort to try and explain worked so well for President Obama. President Obama inherited a situation, too. And he tried to say yes, on a number of occasions, look what I was left with. And a lot of people weren't buying that argument. Maybe, but the guy, the guy bought a dip and Trump bought a, the high. Plus, there's another problem. In, in, in my opinion, we have tail risk today we did not have before. And every day, every day it gets worse. We have a, How bad is the tail risk today relative to where we, it was in 2007? 2007, it, it, like the market had already collapsed. Today, well, we have, no. We, we have, we, now today, you're going to come going back to 2007 and then start counting to to, to look at the difference. It's worse. I, I think so. Of course, look at val valuations are higher. Uh, the risk. Have, hang on a second. The risk of something calamitous happening is the financial today, markets is greater, greater today than it was in 2007. You're falling from higher because you're falling from much higher. You see, you have a, 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 a huge rise, considerable rise in the stock market that you may have to unwind. If that's Let's the case, it, the VIX, the, hang on a second. Yes. If that's the case, the VIX at 15, which is where it's at today, yeah, the, is the at the money cheap? VIX. The at the money VIX is not a good measure. It's a tail that's a good measure. Okay. And uh, I mean, I would buy the at the money VIX. You would engage in a tail hedging strategy. But I would, what, what I would tell you today is that if you own stocks without a hedge, it's, it's not rational.
And last time you were here, and actually the, the mm -hmm. penultimate time I was on TV, I don't like to go on TV, and I'm glad, uh, you know, we get along and we can do this. Uh, last time I was here, I explained to you the, my, my, my research. And if you are exposed to tail risks, then your alpha and your future returns are going to be divorced from the return of the market. You see? So, and people don't realize that. It's like buying a house without insurance. You cannot really look at what's going to happen, you know, to your house by looking at the housing market unless you are hedged. That's, that's my statement. I'm here with Nassim Taleb. We know him as the author of The Black Swan. I like to think of you, Nassim, as a trader turned philosopher. Thanks. This is a, you know, the problem is when you're a trader, you stay a trader, regardless of what always, you're Once a trader, always a trader. Always you're a, a risk trader. management guru. You're a contrarian. You're a number of things. Contrarian, contrarian doesn't mean take the opposite position. To no, I people, know. Yeah, all right. Means so, independent, you mean. So let's tap into some of that right now. Okay. You, like me, and everyone here, yeah. everyone anywhere, has been watching what's going on in the White House. And some people think of it as a train wreck. When you look at what's going on in the White House, when you look at what Donald Trump is doing and what he's saying, what do you see? Well, uh, first of all, you watch too much <laughs> news because Obamacare is a disaster. It's a centralized system for 300 million Americans. We're not Canadians, all right? Canada is a small country. You cannot scale things up. You need to do it differently. So the, the point isn't whether you're depriving people you, or In not, other words, you support the not, effort to repeal Obamacare. To replace Obamacare with something more rational. Okay, so That's he wanted to cut more. taxes. He wanted to repeal Obamacare and replace Three. it. Third, we, the train wreck, the real train wreck is globalization. Globalization, and I, I mean, I wrote about it on the Black Swan and everybody cheered. Right, and now they're against it. Globalization leads to monoculture. I mean, unfettered globalization leads to a concentration of companies and winner take all effect. Okay, and, and I describe so he's it, the anti globalist, not anti globalist, he's fixing the system. All right, he's okay, making the system so a tribute to a uh, someone who's trying to cover up something he's not trying to cover up so what happens then this all this is this all works itself out it's fine i, I don't know but i mean we've had uh, many of those we had that uh, paranoia about the russians but that's not what's happening now a lot of things are happening that people aren't looking at such as okay so you got to look at the situation pre-trump and which way we're heading there are a lot of things that trump are, uh, is you know came to do that mm -hmm. are substantial the first one is after 32 years, fixing the tax code. Okay, the tax code is, some, is, is exactly like something that's metastatic, all right? It starts, uh, uh, codes bring codes, bring codes, bring codes, unless someone comes in with a Gordian knot, cuts the whole thing, and you need someone aggressive. Okay, Trump tax goes. reform number one. Number two is, uh, to me, the way he fired, the reason he fired Comey is because in, probably in the mind of Trump, he doesn't collude with the Russians. And for him, it's a diversion. That's it. It's the opposite. In other words, the opposite of what most people think. Many yeah, people, I won't say most, think many it. people think Trump, he fired Comey because Trump Comey is, wouldn't stop exactly. Trump, probing the Russia ties or allegations. Maybe, but Trump is not, you know, people think that Trump is not someone who is intelligent. Trump is not an idiot. He wouldn't be there if he didn't. He, he, there's something, there's a logic to Trump that you can only get if you forget about the news and then look at Trump as Trump. That's his behavior. He didn't do anything wrong. He may have, he may have violated a rule, but there's nothing, not the gravity that you may have. I don't see a train wreck. Um, and I don't see particularly Donald Trump as anything different from other uh, politicians except in his language, okay? Uh, and, and or perhaps uh, in, in the way he does things in the accelerated way. Why? You got to remember that Donald Trump is a fellow who never had a supervisor in his life. No boss. No boss. So he doesn't know how to express things in a way that a supervisor okay, can understand. So you have to translate what he says and just focus on what he does and to see the things he's trying to do. What about firing the FBI director? 
What, what about all, concerns? What about concerns the over... The signal I got, that maybe because I live in a different world, maybe because I watch actions, not comment 